Without the artist in London, there isn't London. London, it's a very hybrid city, regardless of what people's background or ethnicity is. I find art everywhere in London, from great museums to local artist-led spaces and in our local communities, it's all happening. I remember at one point in the 90s, there was like 20 artists in London and now it feels like thousands. Without realizing you are part of a really nice community. Often in these intersections between different communities that new ideas are born. Artists bring so much like vibrancy and record London in the ways that they see it. I arrived in London like in 97, and at the time I was living in a really small village in France. And when I came to London, it was um, really intense. Big shops and like crazy people wearing like full on outfits. And like I, I was arriving home, it was just really nice to see people being quite extravagant in the city. So, this is my studio, Walala Studio. This is more like the, a bit of a messy, uh, messy area. So like this is like kind of like things I do here in the studio. I think the process for me is always the same, or the first idea is always the same. Is like to bring something positive in the city and bring a burst of like colors and pattern. And I think just to bring a little bit of like happy vibes. My ideal job would be like to paint maybe like a council estate. So I'm just thinking about bringing a bit of like color to them. That would be a really nice kind of like gesture. When I go every time in the center, I just see everyone just like rushing around and I just wanted to create something where, yeah, people are gonna just almost feel like it'll be like at home for like five minutes. The idea is to, to have people walking through the, the street and just like, yeah, like sit down, um, just have some time to kind of like just relax, I guess. I feel like when every time I come in the central of London, like people walk from like A to B really fast and like don't really take time to kind of be in the now. I just hope like people can actually come and just relax a little bit and just take the time to sit down and maybe like talk to their friends or something. It's absolutely amazing. Are you lucky? Yeah. Yeah, love it. Oh, thank absolutely you. Love it. I, think, yeah, I think the flags just finish it off. Yeah. So when I came to London, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. So I worked like in different uh, job for a little while, and I work actually in a cafe. Oh, hello. Back to where you yeah, used to yeah, back to work. Yeah. Especially in this area, it was like a lot of people having like creative meetings, and I was quite like a bit envious of them. I want to be like you. I just want to just have a chat, like talking creative things. I just always kind of did a lot of market when I was younger. I was doing jewelry or like making bags. I did Notting Hill and Camden and so I bought the market. So yeah, it's nice to finally be on the other side. Without realizing you are part of a really nice community and everyone seems to kind of like really help each other. I just felt straight away like at home and I wanted to stay here. So three months become like 20 years. What's always made East London special for me is just this kind of breathing space in the kind of hubbub of the city. I'm now situated on a beach in Cuba and I can teleport around the beach and explore different elements. I think I always resisted this idea of kind of being a formulaic artist. I was really interested in how I could start to take ideas for a walk between sculpture, filmmaking, painting, and more recently sort of working in virtual reality. What was it like growing up in London? Uh, the food was terrible except if you were not English. <laughs> if you were from a sort of more diverse background, you had access to great food, school food, and, and you know, generally what you could get on the high street really sucked. These are all the textiles that I collect and use in a lot of the paintings. Interestingly, I come from about 10 generations of South Asian textile merchants, so you know, I've ended up by accident in the family business. It's hard to sort of separate where you live from what you do because it's sort of, you know, they're so enmeshed with each other. Hackney Wick in the 90s was kind of like Mad Max territory. It was all burnt out cars and stacks of old tires. A lot of artists first started moving here 20 years ago or more because you could get space. 
after the Olympic regeneration, a lot of artists have actually been forced out of their studios. We fought quite hard to actually get this space which was meant to be for creative businesses. That becomes very important, like how do you make communities sustainable? Hey Manuel. I have a mentoring space around the corner which some artisanal bookbinder friends, I gave it to them. People they use part of their studio as an exhibiting space, often for underrepresented artists. I've found that, you know, you can't really rely on outside agencies to do that. You need, as artists, people who kind of care and want to be responsible parts of the community. You have to kind of fight for it. Take a trip to London Southwest Nine. Caters largely for the fast growing influx of British citizens from the West Indies and Africa who have made London their home. Brixton is one of South London's most vibrant neighbourhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you. I feel like Brixton's like what I imagine London to be, with all the different cultures all kind of coming together and being in one place simultaneously, happily, and everyone's just like getting along, and I think that's really beautiful. Put, put it up. <laughs> it's cool. In Nigeria, we call them Ankara prints. Hello. A traditional material used to make clothing. So this one's quite cool. Um, and I sometimes like use these kind of prints in my paintings. I get inspiration from shop windows, walking around, just being out and about. So Brixton's a really good place to pick up source imagery, interesting figures. Almost every time I leave the studio, I get an idea of how, like, how to do something in my work. These are all works in progress. This one's so big that it's taken, like, yeah, time and energy. Archive imagery is um, quite important in my work. It was kind of just a starting point to have access to like a range of figures. They're family photographs that I use for my work. They're all such a mess. So I normally just tell people that they're figurative paintings. What they are is collaged images, so images taken from different sources, kind of put together to create something new that doesn't exist in that form. Change I'd like to bring with my artwork is normalising seeing black figures in painting to the extent where people stop talking about the figures in the painting, but more about how they're painted. London has been, well, it's quite special. And I feel like my parents really tried to bring like the Nigerian culture like into the home with just like making sure we knew where our family came from. So cool. So it's really interesting being here in the Black Cultural Archives because this kind of like normal everyday kind of snapshot imagery um, kind of resonates with my work quite a bit because they're just taken like on the go every day. So when people look at my work, they normally get a sense of warmth and relate it back to their own families and their own like cultures or back home, wherever that is for them, whether they are West African or not. Yeah, I just get a lot of compliments about the split between being British and something else. So many great artists that have come before, lived in London, painted London. It just adds huge cultural capital.